taking a break from Mark and Timber in this woodlot next door, and I wanted to stop and tell you guys about this um, field of grass that's growing in here. Seems like all the deer are bedded in here and then going towards the woods when there's acorns to uh, feed, but they're not staying in there. So what we're going to do is thin that stand and try to get some structure on the ground so they bed down in there. But I want to talk about this bunch grass, which is Indian grass. Now there's a lot of scuttlebutt going around that switch grass is the be all and end all of warm season grasses. But I can tell you that um, I'm very impressed with what this guy was able to do with pure Indian grass stands. This is about, I'm six feet, so it's over my head. And you can imagine that a deer can disappear in this pretty well. There's probably a hundred acres of it or more here. So it can hold a lot of deer. Uh, the only thing I could see is that maybe if you could add a little bit of a forb con component to it, by burning and then adding some things, either letting it come up naturally or uh, putting some forbs in with it. But uh, the interesting thing about Indian grass uh, that I didn't realize before was that you can use plateau herbicide on it where that's not very healthy for switchgrass, but Indian grass and big blue stem can hold up to uh, being treated with plateau herbicide which will get rid of all your pasture grasses and broadleaves that come up in a pasture so you want to do a burn down with that uh, pre-emergent and plant this stuff and then probably hit it again with uh, a journey which is a mazepic plus roundup plus glyphosate and that will pretty much set the stage to let this stuff take off now, there's um, a lot said about how this stuff won't hold up the snow. Well, it's uh, January, and we had about 16 inches of snow, 3 inches of rain on top of that, and some ice storms already this year, and it's standing up just fine. Um, this is planted at a rate of 6 pounds to the acre, so there's plenty of room in between for pheasants to run around in here and for wildlife to use it. Um, all right, well, that's about it. It's a beautiful place here. You can see, I'll show you the mountains. The film doesn't do it justice. It's beautiful up here. I'm gonna take you over and show you the wood lot here in a second and uh, show you what we're doing over there too. Okay, so over in the wood lot, I don't know if you can see this trail here. There's deer trails coming in from the switchgrass into the woods. And we know they're headed this way because the rubs are on this side of the tree, on the grass side. I love it when you get a big rub right next to a trail. It's a beautiful thing. So what we're going to try to do is as you can see you can see all the way across this woodlot I can see the neighbor's house from here you don't want that what you want is like this blow down over here you want some structure on the ground and some shrubs growing up so the deer will come in here and bed down and then you can hunt them from a tree stand pretty hard to hunt deer especially with a bow out in that grass now, there is a stand of brassicas that he planted right next to the woods where yesterday I could see deer coming out and feeding in that brassica, but it was just a couple of fawns, uh, nothing, nothing special. And there were some deer bedded, well, I don't know if they were bedded in it, I assume they were, but they got up and they went out that way. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's some tops of blowdowns up there. Now, there's enough, um, there's a beautiful stand of cherries. Too bad there's no market for cherry, but it's too small. So what we're going to try and do is just do TSI back in here to let some light in and put more growth into those cherry trees. Hopefully the market will improve on cherry a little bit 
and um, we'll increase the value of this stand. There's another trail right here. Yeah. And the soil's great. I mean, you could you get a little sunlight in here, you can grow just about anything. And uh, there's enough walnut right along the edge that we could pay for all the TSI work that needs to be done. So that's what I try to do is to uh, get enough income out of a timber sale that the other cultural work that we need to do, like thinning, planting, food plot, construction, um, it all comes out of the timber sale, okay? And, you know, we're, everybody's happy. And we can make a nice deer property. These trails really show up beautiful in this soft earth. So out beyond the truck there, that green is a pretty beat up brassica plot. They didn't really get into that until after the snow um, had pretty much covered everything and then it melted and then the deer seemed to really get after it once that snow melted. Alright, well I gotta get back to Mark and Timber and I'll see you on the next one. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button and click on the bell so you'll be notified when there's a new video. And comment down below and let me know if there's anything you'd like to know more about.